What's up, Navigation Traders? Happy Friday. Today is September 21st. Welcome to this week's video update. Let's go ahead and just jump into the alerts, starting with the first trade on Monday the 17th. We did a rolling adjusting trade in Apple. So this is one where we rolled from September to October uh, and then adjusted the uh, strikes accordingly. Now, remember, this one has gone against us. We've rolled several times, but we initially put this on for that short delta, that short bias exposure in our portfolio. So it's one of those that's continuing to be a hedge to protect us from downside. Obviously, we haven't seen a lot of downside in the market. It's been pretty bullish, but you've got to keep that, that downside protection on. Uh, so here's what that trade looks like now. Uh, you can see prices is, is well within our range here, just looking for some downside to benefit that one. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in QQQ. Uh, we did back to back. So we had two sets of short call verticals in QQQ. So we rolled the first one out to October from September to October. And then we rolled the next one all the way out to November because it was in our wheelhouse of under, under 60 days. So what that does is it kind of spreads out the duration. So we're kind of diversifying our duration, diversifying our time to expir uh, expiration. Typically, we're just rolling to the next monthly cycle. But in this case, we kind of fell in that spot where we could either have rolled to October or rolled out to November. And so we did one of each just to kind of help spread that around. So if we look at the queues, uh, you'll see here, the, this is the October one. You can see prices right here uh, still in our range here since we've rolled. And then this one is out in November. Very similar you know, risk profiles when you look at it. Uh, one just has a little bit more time than the other. So that, that's, what, uh, that's what we did there. Remember, these were originally part of iron condors. And when price came down and breached our break even, we closed out the uh, untested side, continued to roll this, this tested side. And the reason we do that is because we needed to keep short delta in our portfolio. So we could have closed them out. Uh, but then we would have just been going out and looking for another short delta position to add that back into our portfolio. So in that case, we just continue to roll this and keep that short delta exposure in our portfolio and continue to extend duration on this trade. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in EWZ. So we closed out one set of our short strangles in EWZ, booked over 40% of max profit on that piece of the trade. And then at this point, we were still holding the 34 puts and 35 calls. And then later in the week, and I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead to that next EWZ. Uh, so on the 19th, then we went ahead and closed out the remaining one and, and booked a profit on that one. So we ended up booking a nice profit on that trade overall. In fact, let me just go to the closed trades and I'll show you where that ended up. You can see we initially... Put on this trade on July 19th, had to make several adjustments, a couple different rolls, but by staying mechanical and just continuing to uh, make the necessary adjustments, booked a nice profit of $623 on that one. So good trade in EWZ. And, uh, and then I'll go ahead and go to the platform because we ended up putting on another trade in EWZ because implied volatility is so high. Uh, you can still see that the IV percentile currently is at 92, IV rank at 67. So this is a great vehicle to, to be having short premium on because we're collecting a lot of credit. Um, and so you can see price is still very centered here on our new strangle. Uh, nothing to do but sit and wait. One note I did want to make on EWZ. The reason that their implied volatility has been so heightened is you know, there's a lot of turmoil within the, the Brazilian government, but they actually have elections coming up on October. It starts on October 7th. So it's a little bit different than ours in that their elections last over a period of time. So it's October 7th through October 20 something. I can't remember the exact date, but uh, once once they get a better idea of of who the new president is going to be, then implied volatility will probably contract. But we may we may be already out of this trade by then. We'll see what happens. 
Uh, but if not, just understand that risk that there could be some extreme volatility in the price of EWZ uh, leading up to and during that election period. So if you're not comfortable with that, then don't trade it. Uh, we, on the other hand, we don't we don't trade on news, okay? Everything is built into this price. Everything is built into the implied volatility. And when implied volatility is high, that means there's uncertainty in that marketplace. And that's when we like to sell. We like to take advantage of that uncertainty, take advantage of that fear in the marketplace and sell premium. So we will be trading through that. And uh, But just FYI, um, you know, if it if it makes you nervous, then uh, you want to make sure and take the appropriate uh, risk into account. Next trade was let's go back to the uh, go back to our order here. Uh, next trade was an opening adjusting trade in FXI. So we added a call butterfly out in November in FXI, and uh, and we've still got the put butterfly back in October. So if we take a look at FXI. You can see it's it's been on a nice rally over the last couple of weeks here, and so our uh, this is our November one, still very centered, and then in October one, the price has gone a little bit outside of our range here, so just looking for a little bit of a bounce back to the downside to do anything there. Uh, so we just simply added that November one, trying to spread that out. So if we so if we look at them all together, you can see it kind of widens out our overall break evens gives ourselves more profit potential. And so we'll just continue to manage this one as needed. Next trade was an opening trade in Natty Gas. So we put on a short strangle in Nat Gas. Uh, IV percentile in the underlying ETF UNG uh, popped up to 50. So we wanted to sell some premium in Nat Gas. I love having these uncorrelated uh, symbols. So, you know, natural gas isn't correlated to stocks or to weed or to oil, you know, it, it's it's a fairly uncorrelated symbol, which adds that that diversification to our portfolio, which is key. You can see the price is uh, right here, still well within our range. It's moved up a little bit since we put this on, but we'll just continue to watch and let that theta to decay in natty gas. Next trade was an opening trade in TLT. So TLT spiked up, uh, excuse me, the implied volatility in TLT spiked up to around the 60 level. It's been pretty low for the last couple of weeks, uh, but it spiked up, so we sold some premium in here. Uh, I mentioned in the trade comments that you could have traded uh, forward slash ZB, which is the 30-year bond, or ZN, which is the 10-year note, which we've, uh, over the last few months, we've, we've traded a decent amount of the notes. In this case, we decided to just put on TLT to change things up a little bit, but any of those symbols works. Uh, you can see we got a little bit of profit so far in TLT, but uh, nothing, not enough to take off yet. So we'll just continue to monitor that. Next trade was a uh, closing trade where we bought back our iron condor in IYR, which is the real estate ETF. Booked over 25% max profit. We're only in the trade for 14 days. Uh, and this was kind of a, a tighter iron condor. So the short strikes were closer to the current price. So we're not going to wait for the full 40% of max profit. We're going to take that off a little bit quicker. And the fact that we got it in such a short period of time, it makes sense to close those winners out and take those profits and run. So booked a nice trade there. Next trade was the one in EWZ I already mentioned. Then we've got the rolling adjusting trade in ES. So this was a, uh, a short call vertical, which is originally part of an iron condor. We, we waited until... Um, down pretty close to expiration this time. We usually don't like to wait that long. We were hoping for just a little bit of downside. It did not play nice with us. It continued to move higher, so we went ahead and rolled that from September to November. Again, kind of like the Qs, we ended up just rolling this out two different cycles. So instead of rolling from September to October, we went ahead and rolled it all the way out to November with uh, with 57 days to expiration. And, um, and so... I'll show you what that looks like. In fact, I'll go to the platform here in a second because we had another ES trade. Next trade was a closing trade in SMH. So we had a short strangle in SMH, closed that out, booked around 40% of max profit in just 14 days on that one. So nice trade in SMH. If we take a look at the chart, 
Let's see where IV is right now. Uh, it's right under the 50 level. Uh, it's dropped even more. So IV percentiles at 37. If, uh, if implied volatility, in, imp, implied, if I can talk today, if implied volatility pops its head back up over that 50 level, uh, we'll, we'll most likely look to, uh, to sell some more premium in SMH, being that the liquidity is, uh, is good in there now. Next trade uh, was EWZ, so that was that opening. That's that current strangle that we currently have on that I already showed you. And then we we re-entered. We opened a new position, in this case an iron condor in IYR again, the real estate ETF. And again, because this is uh, such a tight iron condor, we're looking for about 25 to 35% of max profit as opposed to the 40 or 50% uh, that we usually do. And the reason we are trading this closer to the money is because uh, IYR overall is a fairly low volatility ETF, uh, meaning the options aren't that expensive. And so uh, when you get in a situation like that, just to collect enough credit, sometimes you got to go closer to the money. And so uh, you'll see what it looks like here. It's, it's, it's only two strikes wide, excuse me, three strikes wide. So the 80, 83 and, uh, and, and so it's almost, it's getting close to being a butterfly. And remember we manage butterflies quicker because of that more narrow range. And so same thing with this here, if we were to widen out those strikes to make it a big wide range, the problem is you just don't collect enough credit. So with transaction costs and your risk versus reward just isn't quite there. Uh, it's kind of like trading some of these other lower price symbols, even though IYR is an $82 ETF. Uh, you're still just not collecting quite enough credit to make it worthwhile. Uh, and then on the other hand, I also looked at doing a short strangle. So just going naked and not buying the wings. And I didn't like that either because of the capital requirement. So I think for four contracts, we were looking at putting up, if I remember right, it was it was like eight or nine thousand dollars. And that's just that's just not a really efficient use of capital. So I wanted to define the risk. Uh, but to collect enough credit, I had to go closer to the money. And so that's what we're looking at here. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in ZW. So we closed out our short put vertical in ZW. And, um, and, and so the options expired today. So we had to get out of this one. Uh, similar to ES, uh, this one didn't quite go our way in time and, and we kind of ran out of time. So we went ahead and just closed that out, took a loss on this piece, still holding our full iron condor in November. And uh, so if we take a look at ZW, uh, here's the full iron condor. You can see we got a decent profit here, not quite enough to take off yet. But the other one you can see is zeroed out. That's the one that we just closed out. So we'll just continue to monitor and manage this as needed. Um, but anyway, here's what we've got going on here. We've got we've got the long put vertical. Okay, we put this on strictly for that short delta exposure in our portfolio. You can see uh, the market's been strong. It's moved higher, and then we've got this uh, short call vertical. Uh, which you see here, you see prices right here, almost on the break-even point, looking for some downside to benefit that as well. So these two short call verticals were originally part of iron condors. And, and so we've just been kind of rolling them again to keep that short exposure in our portfolio and extend duration on those trades. So the two, the two short call verticals are part of the iron condor trade. I know this is a little bit confusing. And then the one with the long put vertical with one contract, that's part that's a totally separate trade that we have on just as a hedge with that that short delta exposure. So we have three pieces on. Two pieces are part of the iron condor, one piece is part of the long put vertical. And uh, so we'll just continue to manage those. So so it was it was that short put vertical, excuse me, it was that short call vertical uh, was the one that we were we held all the way up until the day before expiration. Uh, so I was correct on those alerts. Um, let me go back and just make sure I'm not confusing everybody. Yeah, so it was, it, was, it was the one yesterday where we rolled the short call vertical. I was thinking it was the long put vertical, but it wasn't. It was the short call. And, uh, 
And so, yeah, this one, we were hoping, we were kind of holding it. We usually don't hold these all the way to expiration like this, but I was just hoping it was so close that I was hoping if we could just get a little bit of a move down, we'd be able to roll that for a credit. Uh, unfortunately, it went against us, so we just we had to make the roll anyway because we were getting close to expiration. So that one, that one did hurt a little bit as far as eroding some of those profits that we've seen, but, uh, but that's just part of trading. In fact, I want, I want to show you an email that I got from a member this morning, and I'm not going to want to make sure I never use last names, but his first name is Jeff. And so here's, here's what it says. And I think this is really important and I really, uh, hopefully it helps some of you other, uh, traders as well. So, Hey Steve, I just want to continue to let you know how thank you for you uh, I am for the wonderful service you provide. As always, as I always tell you, I'll never be able to thank you enough. That's awesome. Thank we love hearing that uh, from our members as well. But the key thing that I want you to see is, you know, this trade. And he was talking about the the wheat trade. This trade, as well as the ES call vertical that we closed out yesterday, didn't work out as well as we would liked. But hey, that's trading. It's tough to see your profits erode. Uh, by a couple of trades that hurt a little, a little, but I'm learning to think the way you do and remember that it's a numbers game and you have to let the probabilities play out and look at the long term, not just one or two trades. Amateurs have a tough time with losses and I'm striving to be a professional. Now, Jeff has been with us for less than a year and I'm not sure exactly what his experience was before he jumped on board with us, but to have this perspective, and let me finish, and then I'll give you my thoughts. So I refuse to see it as other than just the way the game is played. There will always be losses, and some may sting a little more than others. But on the flip side, there will be times when everything works out amazingly, and the market goes our direction when we close out a trade. It all balances out. This perspective, this mindset, is exactly how all of us need to be thinking. You know, the last uh, yesterday when we did close that out and we, it did get it did sting a little bit, but it's it's one trade or one or two trades. You've got to look at this as a, a a long game. If you're if you're that focused on one or two trades and taking a loss, and you have that hard of a time taking a loss, then then trading is going to be a very very difficult thing for you. And I responded to Jeff's email and I and I told him this. What great perspective, especially for somebody as new of a trader as he is to have that kind of mindset, to have that kind of perspective, man, kudos to you, Jeff, because that is awesome. It literally took me 10 years to get to this point. Uh, I would, you know, the whole market of fear and greed when I, when I'd be doing well, I'd get greedy and I'd, you know, start getting my position size would start getting too big when I would take losses. I'd get down in the dumps, get you know emotionally down and and really emotionally tied to that. And you've got to a stay small enough so that it doesn't affect your mindset too bad. But b you've got to have this this mindset of long term letting the probabilities play out. And so this was such a cool email, and I wanted to share it with everybody because I think if if more people had this mentality, uh, more people would be highly successful trading. Uh, so anyway, I hope that helps in just giving a little bit of perspective. And, and thanks again, Jeff, for writing that email because that, that, that's so awesome. We love hearing about stuff like that from our members, not only you know when you're having winning trades, but in this case, you know Jeff took a little loss on one of the trades, but, but that mindset is so, so key. So good job, Jeff. Um, let's see, where were we here? So the ZW, and then lastly, we did an opening adjusting trade in oil forward slash CL. So we already have a uh, an adjusted short strangle on in oil, and we wanted to add to that. Uh, so here is, let's go to this one first. Here's our, here's our current position. You can see price is kind of hanging out here near the upper end of the range of this uh, adjusted strangle. And this is in November, which has 26 days to expiration. And then, so what we did is we just simply, we don't need to adjust this one yet as far as rolling or doing anything like that. But what we did do is we went ahead and added another short strangle centered around the current price. And that's where, that's where we're at right now. Uh, one of the reasons we wanted to do that is if we look at a chart of oil, what you'll see is the implied volatility is, is really nice and high at the, about the 66 level. So I was looking to get on some more short premium, some more exposure there. And, uh, and so that's what we've done. And so, and we spread that duration out. So we've got some in November and then the recent 
strangle we added is in the December cycle. I can't believe we're already putting on December trades. Uh, it's going to be Christmas before you know it, but, uh, but that's where we're at. So uh, that's where we're at in oil. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions that we have on. I went through these. I went through Apple. Costco. So Costco is a pre-earnings long call that we have on. Earnings uh, announcement is on 10-4, so October 4th. So we still have about a couple weeks before that happens. So we're just looking for some upside in Costco, uh, which is... You know, with the market being strong the last couple of days, I would have hoped that Costco would have followed through, uh, followed the market and, and exploded a little bit higher. And I would have hoped to have booked a profit in this already. However, that didn't happen. Uh, but you can see, you know, when the rest of the market was going up, Costco is kind of just bouncing around. Let me get this. Uh, Costco is just kind of bouncing around, but now it's starting to to crank up. So if we can get up to kind of the two between 240 and 245 level up in here, that'll give us a nice profit that we can take off. So we'll see if that happens into the next couple of weeks. Uh, let's see, DIA. So we've got a couple of short call verticals on in DIA, which has been extremely strong. So you can see prices broke out above our range here. So we need a little bit of downside to get back into our range in DIA. Uh, similar to the Qs, this this uh, this was both of these were part of a an iron condor, and we and we rolled them to continue to keep that short delta in our portfolio. And speaking of, by the way, as as far as that ratio goes, we are um, currently at about four to three and a half to four to one on our ratio. So remember. We always like to keep about anywhere from one to one to five to one short delta in our portfolio. So versus our theta. So if our theta is theta is a hundred dollars, we don't want to have any more than minus five hundred dollars of short delta. And we're right at about four to one right now. And so we're kind of on. Uh, we're we're well within our range. Obviously, with the market going higher as it has this week. Uh, that's going to automatically give us more short delta because of the uh, range-bound trades that we have on. And so we're, we're in a good situation, but obviously if we see a little bit of downside, that's definitely going to benefit us. Uh, if not, we'll have to just continue to roll up and manage, manage as needed. Uh, next, uh, next position is EEM. So we've got an adjusted strangle on here. I was looking to potentially add to this by adding another November kind of centered strangle around the current price, which is right here. Uh, but implied volatility is really contracting today. It's right down at the 50 level on the percentile. So I'm hoping that next week we might get a little bit of a pop up and I will look to potentially add on to this trade by doing an opening adjusting trade. Uh, in regards to the current position, you know, if you look at just the puts, you know, we, we still, we're not anywhere close to max profit on that. So that's why we don't need to adjust yet. Uh, you know, price would have to get kind of way out in this area here uh, before we needed to roll up the puts anymore. October has 28 days to expiration. So once we get down to that you know, around 21 days to expiration, uh, you know, in the next seven days, then we'll look to potentially uh, roll this. If we need to roll the puts up, we will. If we need to just roll the entire spread out to November, we'll do that. Uh, but we'll wait and see what happens. If price comes back down and just continues to uh, have our profit line continue to increase, that theta to decay, then we may just take it off and, and close it out. Uh, we'll have to see where we're at uh, with everything at that point. EWZ, I already mentioned, FXI, I mentioned, IWM. So we've got a short call vertical on in IWM that we uh, was previously part of an iron condor. You can see prices well within our range. Got a little bit of profit here, but uh, looking for a little bit more before we do anything with that. I mentioned IYR. I mentioned the Qs. I mentioned TLT. Tesla, our good friend Tesla. Tesla's been good to us over the last couple months. Uh, I've got a little bit of profit here on this short strangle, about 140 some dollars of profit. If we get a little bit of downside and or a little bit more implied volatility contraction, uh, we'll be more in the profit here. You can see with the headlines and things going on with Tesla and Elon Musk, uh, the uncertainty is still in the market. So the implied volatility continues to stay high. 
If we get a little bit of a contraction there, we'll uh, should be able to book a nice winner, assuming price stays in a decent range. Lastly, XLK. We've got a uh, long put vertical on here. You can see price is right there. So just looking for a little bit of downside to benefit that as well. Again, that is a piece that we have on for that short delta exposure to, uh, to keep our portfolio a little bit short biased in case of that downside velocity uh, that we can see from time to time. So those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. I hope everybody has a great weekend. Look forward to some good trading next week. Have a good one, everybody.